Today on Shop Math, we're going to continue to look at volume and see a couple more real life scenarios where calculating the volume of a space can help us with our work. You might want to grab a pencil and paper to help you with today's problems, and a calculator if you like. One reason that a homeowner, contractor, or designer might need to calculate the volume of a space is when they're trying to install HVAC equipment. HVAC stands for heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. If an HVAC technician is installing a furnace or an air conditioner in a home, they need to understand the volume of the space being heated or cooled in order to choose the right one. Too big and the system will cost too much and might overpower the space, making it too hot or too cold. Too small and the system might not be able to heat or cool the space properly, leading to high energy bills and premature wear on the system. To figure out the right furnace or AC for a space, the volume of the space needs to be calculated. Let's see an example. For this example, let's look at our house again. And let's remove the roof to take a look inside. If you wanted to buy an air conditioning unit to cool the main living area, how would you know what size AC system you need? More powerful AC units can cool larger volumes of space, but will cost more money. To figure out which AC to buy, first we have to calculate the volume of the rooms to be cooled in cubic feet. We're going to have to think of these spaces as separate rectangles each with their own volume. Once we figure out the volume of the separate parts, we can add them back together to figure out the volume of the whole room. Here are our spaces with dimensions. Let's deal with these rectangles one at a time. This problem shouldn't be too bad because all of our shapes are rectangles and we'll use the simple volume formula for a rectangle, width times depth times height. We'll call our spaces A, B, and C to keep them straight. Let's tackle space A first. To find the volume, we need to use the dimensions for width, depth, and height. Our width dimension is 8 feet, so no trouble there. Our depth dimension is 7 feet 8 inches, so we'll need to convert this into decimal feet before we can use the measurement in our formula. 8 inches divided by 12 inches equals 0.67 feet. When we add this back together with the seven whole feet, we get a depth dimension of 7.67 feet. And our height dimension is also eight feet, so no need to convert anything here. Eight feet times 7.67 feet times eight feet equals a volume of 490.88 cubic feet for part A of our space. Next, we'll look at part B. Again, we're going to use the width, depth, and height dimensions. Our width dimension is 11 feet 1 inch, so we need to convert the 1 inch portion into decimal feet by dividing 1 by 12, which equals 0 0.083 feet. When we add this back together with our 11 whole feet, we get a width dimension of 11.083 feet. Our depth dimension is 13 feet 8 inches, so once again we'll need to convert this into decimal feet. 8 inches divided by 12 inches equals 0.67 feet. When we add this back together with the whole feet, we get a depth dimension of 13.67 feet. And our height dimension is still 8 feet exactly, so no need to convert anything there. 11.083 feet times 13.67 feet times 8 feet equals a volume of 1,212.04 cubic feet for part B of our space. Now we can perform the same steps to find the volume of part C. Our width dimension is 19 feet 1 inch, so we convert the 1 inch portion into decimal feet by dividing 1 by 12, which equals 0 0.083 feet. And we add this back together with our 19 whole feet, to get a width dimension of 19.083 feet. Our depth dimension is 12 feet 9 inches, so we'll need to convert the inch portion. 9 inches divided by 12 inches equals 0.75 feet. When we add this back together with the 12 whole feet, we get a depth dimension of 12.75 feet. Our height dimension is still 8 feet, so no need to convert. 19.083 feet times 12.75 feet times 8 feet equals a volume of 1,946.47 cubic feet for part C of our space. 
to get our total volume, all that's left is to add up the volume of the three parts. The volume of part A plus part B plus part C equals a total volume of 3,649.39 cubic feet for our entire common living space in our example house. Now you try. Find the volume of the room shown here. Use the method shown in the example to break the complex shape down into simpler shapes that we have volume formulas for. Remember to convert any dimensions given in feet and inches into decimal feet before performing the volume calculations. Now that we know the volume of the space we're trying to cool, which of these air conditioning units is the best choice for this example? A, which can cool up to 1,200 cubic feet for $149. B, which can cool up to 2,800 cubic feet for $299 or C, which can cool up to 6,800 cubic feet for $521. Congratulations on completing another round of shop math. It's amazing how many times math comes in useful in everyday situations. The more you practice, the easier it will get, and pretty soon math skills like these will be just another tool in your tool belt. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time on Shop Math.